Ah, uh, yes. Here we go, everybody. It's week two of the NFL season. I'm Johnny Montabano along with Hank and Dichter here as we get you set for week two of the NFL season, which kicked off on Thursday night between the Chiefs and the uh, Chargers. And unfortunately, Hank, we're already uh, playing from behind because we, we took the uh, Chiefs minus three and a half. And unfortunately, that and, and that hook scared me. And I knew that when I was picking the game. And the Chargers, uh, the Chiefs won 27 to 24. So uh, we're 0 and 1 for this week, but we're coming off a week where I think I'm I'm happy with. I mean, I'd like to have done better, but where I was at one point to where I, I finished was all right. But Hank, you had a great week. You went 11 and 5 in week one, and I went 8 and 8. And week one, I always feel toughest week to to pick because of uh, you don't really get a chance to see everybody play. They barely play in the preseason, and uh, you know what now. We have that kind of overreaction week one, and we get you ready for week two. So, Hank, you ready to do this thing? Oh, you bet. Let's go. Yeah, very interesting week of games. We've got a lot of high spreads. We've got some pretty good matchups. I think the first game that we're going to pick and then the last one to close out the week, I think, are the two best games of the week on paper. But uh, a lot of interesting matchups, and we will see what happens. But let's get you some winners here for week number two. Hank, we get it started at the in the early window at 1 p.m. Eastern. We travel to Baltimore where the – Miami Dolphins take on the Baltimore Ravens. It's a Kevin Harlan, Trent Green, and Melanie Collins are on the call here on the NFL on CBS. And Hank, the Baltimore Ravens coming off their opening week win against the Jets. They are three and a half point favorites at home in this one. Yeah, I think that's definitely a decent spread. And uh, you know what? With the, the Ravens being the home team, I think the Dolphins – Art improved team. I mean, we, we saw how they did. Granted, it was against New England Patriots, and I'm going to give you my opinion on New, New England Patriots later. But with that having been said, the Ravens are a team that probably should be able to bounce back after what was really a cat catastrophic season full of injuries last year. I had them beating the Jets with ease last week, and this week I think it'll be much closer, but I am still going to take that three and a half spread and go with Baltimore. Yeah, it's I'm I'm excited to see where these two teams go next because they actually kind of played similar games in in their openers. They both had uh, lack not great running games, uh, just enough big plays on the offense, and very suffocating defenses. And I'm as you know, I am high on the Dolphins, but to me, Baltimore is the more complete team. And I think that Tua would have to play a near perfect game in this one. I think he's got that potential, but uh, I don't see it here. I, I'm going to take the team that I. I feel like the quarterback is more certain, and that is Lamar Jackson. The hook scares me like it did on Thursday night, but you know what? I got to get over that, and I just got to go with the better team in this situation. I'm going to take the Ravens minus three and a half in game number one. We travel to Cleveland, that new logo, that big new logo that's out there in Cleveland. It's Spiro Ditas, Jay Feely, and Aditi Kinkawella on the call on the NFL on CBS Joe, the Joe Flacco led New York Jets traveled to Cleveland against the Browns. The Browns are favored by six and a half. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm just gonna straight up say it. Give me the Browns. If if the arm punt is starting another game for the New York Jets, like as long as like you still have a uh, Joe Flacco starting, I'm not really gonna take my chances with him. Browns, don't get me wrong, I think they're kind of a flawed team, and I know they got lucky in that win against Carolina, but with it being home and with the Jets being, you know, typical SOJ, same old Jets, give me the Brownies and uh, that logo creeps me out. I'm sorry. Yeah. That logo right there would keep me away from them, but let's look at it. Let's give you, well, a fun fact and a not so fun fact, depending on the team here, Ooh, okay. 13, 13 straight losses for the Jets in September. Uh, you know, I'm not, I did not like Robert Sala's comments. Uh, but I don't think the Jets lay a dud here. I really don't. And Joe Flacco is not going to throw the ball 59 times. Jacoby Brissett to me is not going to go off for a big game. So I think the key in this one here is if the Jets can keep Chubb and Hunt contained, then this has the makings of a Jets win. I think it's going to be low scoring. I think it's going to be ugly. But a win is a win. And I'm getting six and a half points. So you know what, Hank? Upset special number one. Ooh. I'm taking the Jets. Hey, look, I'm getting six and a half. Give me the Jets to cover, and I would not be surprised. Let's take the Jets 20 and the Browns 17. Oh, five and okay. One and one. 
they have some, they have some some players on the team. You know what? Um, and the Browns, I don't care who it is, should not be favored by six and a half against anybody. I mean, you look at it; they were the better team against Carolina in Week One, and they barely held on and won. It took a fifty-eight yard field goal during a week where kickers were missing uh, easy kicks. So, um, of course, it wouldn't surprise me. Look, here's another prediction: Jets are down by three scores at halftime, and Flacco looks like crap. They're going to put Mike White in. I I, I really do, but. Joe Flacco's not going to throw 59 times. I think they'll get their running game going. Uh, I know that defense scares me, but this this has a low-scoring game, so I would take the under, and I also would take the Jets plus 6.5 and, and would not be surprised if they pull this one out in Cleveland game number two. Kenny Albert, Jonathan Vilma, and Shannon Spake have the call on the NFL and Fox as the Washington Commanders travel to Detroit to take on the Lions. Uh, one of Hank's upset specials last week, this time, Hank, for the first time in 24 games, the Lions are the favorites, and they are a point-and-a-half favorite against the Washington Commanders. I like that. Give me Detroit. I think they um, – I told you that they were going to show some heart regardless of how they did against the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, granted, I actually did get one thing wrong. I said that they would win outright, the Lions. But with that having been said, I – I'm a lot more impressed by them than I am the commanders. Although then again, between Carson Wentz and Jared Goff, that's not really a great set of quarterbacks that I would really be choosing from. But with the game being at Detroit and the Lions fans being very energized with, you know, this whole new culture that Dan Campbell's tried and changed giants legend right there. And by the way, fun fact, uh, yeah, give me Detroit. Yeah, this is an interesting matchup because if the Commanders win this one, all of a sudden now they're going to be talked about in the NFC East as maybe being a contender at 2-0 and with the, with the Cowboys going in the wrong direction. Uh, that'll be something to watch. The, the, the fight that I saw in the Lions last week uh, was special. They are an improved team. They're still a work in progress. There's no doubt. I'm worried about their run defense, though, in this one, especially up against the Commanders. But I think the Lions do get this one done in a close one. So give me the Lions minus – a point and a half in game number three. So we're both in lockstep there. Uh, Tom McCarthy, Tiki Barber have the call on the NFL on CBS. It's the Indianapolis Colts traveling to Jacksonville, a rematch of week 18, albeit now with different quarterbacks. But it's the Colts who are favored by three against Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take upset special. The even though that's probably going to be a very risky and foolish thing on my part, the reason that I am doing this and look, even if the Colts win, this is by no means going to be a sure thing. Are you ready for for my fun fact for you here? Sure. The last time the Colts won a game in Jacksonville, I was a senior in high school. Yeah, and 2014. Yeah, it's been a while. I'll. I'll I think this kind of goes along with that. Frank Reich, 0-4 in, in Jacksonville. And to me, I look at this matchup and I look at the Colts being very, very desperate because to go 0-2, I know this division's not strong, but you fall to 0-2, I mean, there are going to be signs that you might be calling for Frank Reich to be fired here if they don't know this one. Uh, the, neither quarterback – Actually, 0-1-1, but, you know, in my book, you're right. They should be 0-2. No, I, I, oh yeah, I mean, oh, 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 one and one if they lose, but it would feel like oh and two. I mean, you, you went up against the, uh, the, the, the Texans. I mean, I know you came back from seventeen down to force overtime, but you were the better team in that spot. And Again, you, tying the Texans is an automatic loss in my book. Well, yeah, uh, but I mean, they're the ones that are really desperate in this game. I know neither quarterback really played well last Sunday, but I think Jonathan Taylor is going to punch some holes in a Jacksonville defense that had some tackling issues last week. I know Michael Pittman's kind of questionable. He's doing a little bit of an injury, but I think Matt Ryan, Jonathan Taylor, Michael Pittman, they're better than anything that Washington threw down against the, the Jags. Um, ja Jaguars also had were very undisciplined on defense last week in pen penalty plague. I'm taking the team that's desperate in this spot. I'm taking the Colts 27-17, uh, to 17, so give me the Colts to win and cover down there in Jacksonville in game number four. One of the more intriguing games of the week with – Fox's A team. It's a uh, Kevin Burkhardt, Greg Olson, Aaron Andrews, and Tom Rinaldi the, on the call in the NFL on Fox. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers travel to the New Orleans Saints. Tom Brady looking for his first win in New Orleans as with the Buccaneers. 
And their favorite, the Bucks are by two and a half. Bucks haven't beaten the Saints in a regular season since they got TB12. That's about to change. Give me the goat. All right. Uh, you know, when we discussed the Bucks Cowboys game on episode 25, a game on, obviously all the talk was about Dak. But, you know, it's not like the Bucks really did much. I mean, they only scored 19 points. They are very banged up. I mean, they at one point had five wide receivers on the injury report. And I think that's a big deal. Uh, Jarvis Landry, Michael Thomas, they proved in week one that they are back. And I think they're going to be a problem for Todd Bowles' crew. So, you know what? I'm I'm keeping up with the trend here. I'm taking the Saints plus two and a half. I think they're going to win this game outright. But if not, if it's a two-point game at the end there, like the Saints played a close one last week, I'm getting that. But I think the Saints pull this one out and keep Brady winless over there. So we're we're different in that regard. So give me the Bucks, uh, give me the Saints, I'm sorry, plus two and a, and a half. We get to our game up at MetLife Stadium, Giants home opener. And what an interesting matchup this way, this is with the Carolina Panthers. The Giants are a point and a half favorite. And it's Joe Davis, Daryl Moose Johnson, and Pam Oliver on the call on the NFL and Fox. Uh, Hank, I'll take this one first here because go for it. I'm going to try and put my fandom aside. Of course, I'm rooting for the Giants. Uh, but I go back and watch that game last week, and there were some flaws in the beginning. And kind of a similar in this regard. So to me, I feel like the Giants are the better – to me, the Giants are the better coach in the situation. But to me, Carolina is more talented. I think the one thing to watch early on is if the Giants can get Mayfield discouraged. You know, throw him off. It's like a poker player that's uh, that's playing on tilt from a bad play. But I'm worried about their short area – Yards after catch, skill position guys, you know, uh, Robbie Anderson, uh, Moore, uh, I think McCaffrey. I know the Giants held Derrick Henry in check in the second half, but I, I'm worried that Christian McCaffrey is going to go off here. Uh, look, as a fan, I'm rooting for the Giants. There are going to be some good moments and some bad. But as an analyst here, I think the Panthers pull this one out. So I'm going to take the Panthers plus a point and a half. And hopefully that one I get wrong. <laughs> Believe it or not, you and I are actually in the same boat on this one. I, as much as I'm really tempted to pick the Giants to win a home opener, which by the way, they have not won since 2016. So maybe that drought gets out of the way. I saw some signs that tell, even with the win against Tennessee, you saw a, a few flaws with the Giants and Carolina is going to be coming out into this game very pissed off about that loss to the Cleveland Browns. And look, don't get me wrong. I don't, I think Baker, while he's a decent quarterback, I don't think he's necessarily an elite quarterback per se, but you know what? Ultimately, I think the Panthers have the better team. However, if, if the Giants are to find a way to win this game, it's going to be because they outcoach the Panthers, but yeah. I'm basing this off of talent and I'm also going you saying the Panthers because of my past experiences with taking the Giants whenever like they get an unexpected win and momentum I really can't tempt fate I gotta go with Carolina but by all means Giants please prove me wrong oh I I, I would love it look I mean they're, if they're two and oh all of a sudden the mindset going into week three gets a Dakless Dallas team and then against the Chicago Bears I mean all I mean it's it's very different but if you also would have told me before the season that we would have split the two games to start I would sign up for that so Hopefully get some positive moments out of that. And would, would it surprise me if the Giants win? No, it, it, it wouldn't. I mean, I don't think it's going to be the kind of beatdown they put on the Panthers last season because I think the Panthers are a different team than last year. But I just think there's still – I mean, as excited as we were, there was still a lot of things that you didn't really like in the beginning of that game. And Carolina, uh, to me, is better than the, – they're better than the Titans. So we'll see. Hopefully that one we're wrong about. We travel to the Steel City. Patriots Steelers. This is not Tom Brady versus Big Ben. This is Mac Jones against Mitch Trubisky. It's an Iron Eagle Charles Davis Evan Washburn special here on the NFL on CBS. And the Patriots two point favorites against the Steelers. Patriots are favorite? What? I know. Well, oh I my. think I think part of that's well, do you want to you want to go first? Want me to go first? What do you want to do? Uh no, you go for it. I want to uh, Yeah, I, I actually I, I, this one, I'm I'm actually kind of confident. I know this is going to sound crazy. You look at both of these teams last week; they struggled on offense. The TJ mm -hmm. Watt injury is going to sting. I, mean, I look the one look at last week. I mean, I know the Steelers got five turnovers from uh, 
Joe Burrow, but really didn't do much on offense. But I think their defense is good enough to keep the Patriots from doing much. Patriots have a bad offensive line. They've got a bad secondary. Uh, they're not a good team. I mean, I think Mac Jones is all right, but he's been dealing with a back issue. He's actually was sick this mm-hmm. week. Uh, the key to me is Trubisky. If he has another turnover-free game, the Steelers are going to start 2-0. and And I think they will. I think this is going to be another low-scoring score, early window game. I, I'm going to take the Steelers plus two, and I think they win this game outright. I'm not a fan of the, the Pats. They have a lot of problems right now, and I think it's going to be a low-scoring game, but give me the Steelers plus two. Oh, yeah, no. The um, Patriots, this is the first year ever since I've watched football that I can even confidently go into this year and tell you that the Patriots absolutely stink. And I'm like making no bones about this. Look, are the Steelers, am I saying the Steelers are a flawless team? Absolutely not. Look what happened in the Bengals game. The Steelers probably could have done a better job at putting the way the Bengals and preventing that game from going into overtime in the first place. But at the end of the day, I think they have the better roster, although I'm not too high on their quarterback. I'm, I think it's only going to be a matter of time before Kenny Pickett makes his debut this season. But at the end of the day, I think while the TJ Watt loss is going to sting, I don't think this is going to be the week where it comes back to hurt them. And not to mention the Steelers are a really tough team to play at what I'm still going to call Heinz Field. So getting yeah. Pittsburgh. So you're going to, you're going to take Pittsburgh as well, uh, getting uh, getting two at home. And that'll yes. close out the early window. And then we get to the late window. And there's a bunch of high numbers in this one. This is going to be very, very interesting. We head out to SoFi Stadium where the Rams had a couple of extra days to prepare for this one. It's Kevin Kugler, Mark Sanchez, and Laura Oakman on the call on the NFL on Fox. The Atlanta Falcons travel to SoFi to take on the Super Bowl champion Rams, and L.A. is favored by 10. I think even that that spreads too low, to be honest with you. The Rams are just, I don't care about what happened week one. Maybe what might scare me off from uh, taking the Rams 10-point favorite would be the injury with Matthew Stafford, but I'm sorry. I The Falcons are just, they are a mess. G- give me L.A. Yeah, I mean, it, look, they actually played kind of well against the Saints, and they had a big lead, and they still couldn't hold it. Um, yeah. To me, the Falcons are the worst team in football. I mean, them and the Texans, I think you can flip a coin on that one. Rams coming off a long week, so they're going to be con- they're going to be angry after that. I think a lot of the Stafford problems had to do with the fact that it was very, very rusty, did not play at all in the preseason. All we were talking about was his elbow. There's a couple of things to watch here. I'm looking for the offensive line woes to hopefully correct itself, the lack of depth at the wide receiver position, which I think you did see uh, from the Rams last week. Uh it shouldn't, though, be a big deal when uh, you're facing the Falcons. And I'm also going to look to see if the Rams can get Allen Robinson a little bit more involved. Now, the key to me, if you want to if you want to take the Falcons plus 10 here, let's see if Marcus Mariota can have some long drives. Uh, Drake London already looks pretty good. Uh, Kyle Pitts, that could unlock him. But other than that, I mean, they don't really have much. I mean, if Stafford throws a pick or two, you could see that cover. I'm not going to do it, though. I'm taking the Rams minus 10 and in this one. So we both are going to take the Rams minus 10. This one, interesting, especially coming off of last week. It's an NFC West showdown as the Seattle Seahawks take on the San Francisco 49ers. Adam Admin, Mark Schlereth, and Christina Pink have the call on the NFL on Fox. The 49ers are eight-and-a-half-point favorites in their home opener. Oof, eight and a half point favorites. You know what? I'm going to do this again. It's a division rivalry. And even though I think the 49ers are going to win, that spread for a division game is a little high. So I'm going to take the Seahawks as as like an upset to at least cover, but I still have San Francisco winning. Hank, you and I are sharing a brain on this one. I I think people are going to... What? I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I, I don't think the 49 – if look at last week. Now, I know a lot of that was the rain. And, you know, as I said to you uh, off the air, that's one of the picks I want to have back last week was the 49ers laying seven in, in Chicago. Uh, if I knew the weather was going to be that bad, I should have done my homework. 
I would have changed my pick there. But I don't think the 49ers are going to be able to score enough. You know, Seattle's defense looked very, very good last week. Uh, I think that actually defensively they're not bad. Their concern has been on the offense. This also, to me, doesn't scream high scoring in this one. So at that point, I'm not going to say this, that the Seahawks are going to win, but eight and a half points, I think they could definitely cover that. This could be a touchdown kind of game. So give me the 49ers to win. Give me Seattle, though, plus eight and a half. And another thing to watch, too, Pete Carroll has had a lot of success in San Francisco against San Francisco in the past half decade. He's eight, he's eight and two against them. Now, again, I'm not saying they're going to win, but he's eight and two against them. He's got four straight wins against Kyle, Kyle Shanahan. I think that means something. And the Seahawks to me are going to be that kind of team this year that are going to spoil some teams chances. Look, we saw that with the Broncos, but I don't think they win this one, but I think they do keep it close. Give me the Seahawks plus eight and a half to at least keep this one interesting. And also, I just don't know Trey Lance, if, you know, if he really can get it done. I mean, you know, 49ers are a better team than the Bears, and I know that was a slot fest out there, but they look, they did not look that good at all in that one. So you and I have both taken the Seahawks plus. The other factor, by the way, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this, the okay. health of George Kittle, because I really think not having George Kittle was a big, was a bigger deal than people realize, because he and Lance have just some great chemistry and certainly hurt my fantasy team, because like he's, he's my starting tight end, and I had to start freaking Hunter Henry, but fortunately... I was able to pick up, uh, I believe it was Tyler Higby off the waiver wire. So maybe I'll do better this week. Sorry to go on that random fantasy. No, game. that's okay. Hey, look, it's always with fa- fantasy. You're always allowed I to lost do. to Tom by one friggin' point. <laughs> one hey, look, point Tom beat me. And and Tom, I know, was talking with me about, uh, you know, how his parlay got ruined by the Seahawks. So, um <laughs> Kittle did return to practice, but let's also not remember. Let's also not forget too the uh, Elijah Mitchell injury is also going to be very significant. He's going to be out at least two months there in San Francisco. So I'm gonna, we're both going to take the Seahawks plus eight and a half. We head to Big D. Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Dallas Cowboys. The Cooper Rush led Dallas Cow- Cowboys. It's Jim Nance, Tony Romo, and Tracy Wolfson on the NFL on CBS. The Bengals are seven point favorites against. Cooper Rush and the Cowboys. I'm just going to say it. Accident waiting to happen. Sorry, Stephen A. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm taking that seven point spread. Very little reason to think how the Cowboys can do this. I mean, unless you're going to tell me that Burrow's going to have another off day. Uh, I just, I don't, I don't see it. Uh, I don't know how the Cowboys even get the 10 points in this one. Uh, give me the Bengals. I think this is the perfect kind of bounce back game that Joe Burrow needs. And I'm going to take, I'm going to take Cincinnati minus seven in this one. I mean, there's not much really to break down. Uh, Let's just hope the offensive line does a better job at protecting uh, Burrow. Yeah, that, that see, that's the thing I take out of I couldn't believe how poor that offensive line played last week. Um, we know they definitely made improvements in the off season, but I think also a lot of it has to do with the fact that Burrow didn't play in the preseason with that appendectomy, but I think another week, I think he bounces back. I take Cincinnati to win and cover. Denver Broncos home opener there at Mile High Stadium. It's uh, the Houston Texans taking on the Broncos with Andrew Catalan, James Lofton, and Michael Grady on the call in the NFL and CBS. The Broncos, 10-point favorites at home. Again, I should be jumping on this 10-point spread. There's only one reason why I'm not, and emphasis on the first syllable of a certain head coach's last name, and I just have a weird feeling he's going to find a way to screw things up and make this too close for comfort. Not saying the Broncos will lose; they'll they'll win, but but they're going to probably they might. I have a feeling they're going to play down to the Texans. But then again, this might sound crazy considering it's a home opener. Well, upset special again. I'm. I, I don't know what's with me today with these upsets, but. Well, I mean, you're taking though the Broncos to win. You're just taking the Texans plus ten, though, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're not going full ups, upset special. Um, no. I think this is a great spot for the Broncos. What's one way for the Broncos to bounce back? You give them another home. You give them a home opener against another lackluster team. I think that's just what they need. But Hank, to me, this this screams three words: back door cover Broncos Brown Broncos bounce back but it's too many points 
And I'm hopefully not overreacting to week one from the Texans side of things, but I think Houston finds a way to make to cover this one late. Broncos win, Texans cover. Give me the Texans plus 10 in this one. Oh, my. Arizona Cardinals take on the Las Vegas Raiders at 425 Eastern. It's Greg Gumbel, Adam Archuleta, and A.J. Ross on the call in the NFL on CBS. The Raiders. Five Raiders. Point, yes, Raiders are five-point favorites at Allegiant Stadium. I gave one of my buddies a hard time last week for drinking the Kyler Aid. I will continue to tell you to not drink the Kyler Aid. Give me the Raiders. Yeah, Kyler Murray can only do so much, Hank. That's the thing. Uh, the Cardinals, what we really saw last week, if if so, their defense just looked absolutely horrific. I think the Raiders can pile up the points against them. And, can you know, really the thing is also, can the Cardinals produce points without DeAndre Hopkins? Yeah, they scored 21 points against the Chiefs. That's what it looks like. Two of those, though, were in garbage time. So they had six drives of six yards or less. And, again, Kyler Murray – can only do so much. I don't think the Raiders are worse on defense. Uh, I think they'll be able to move the ball with ease here. Give me the Raiders minus five to win and cover in this one. Sunday night football on NBC. Mike Tirico, Chris Collinsworth, Melissa Stark have the call as the Chicago Bears take on the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers squad, they are 10-point favorites at home in this one. Okay, I know I said that the division rival like spread was too big for the night for the Niners, and this is probably going to come across as hypocritical. But there, if there's one thing in the NFL that's dangerous, it's Aaron Rodgers when he's pissed off, and how convenient that his punching bag for years just so happens to show up next on the schedule <laughs> give me the uh give me the packers it's kind of similar to, to last year if you think about it packers get blown out in their first game of the season and then they face a lower end division rival coming to town and i think this is going to be a spot where he's going to try and uh disavow any any notion that he's losing a step i, I don't even think as as i said last week when we did the picks I don't think the Packers are worth – I mean, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be fine. That team, though, they are very thin at wide receiver. You know, Alan Lazard was not there last week either, and I think that he missed him. Uh, they're not that great in the secondary, but against a Bears team that I think is going to have a tough time scoring, I think this is a perfect bounce-back game for Green Bay. I take. I think the Packers are going to steamroll them. Give me the Packers plus a uh, minus 10 on Sunday night football. And then it's a Monday night doubleheader. You know, norm sometimes we get those to start the year, but this year it's happening in week number two. And first game at 7.15 Eastern on Monday night features the Tennessee Titans traveling to Buffalo to take on Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. And it's Steve Levy, Dan Orlowski, Lewis Riddick, and Laura Rutledge on the call. Monday night football on ESPN. Hank, Bills are 10-point favorites. I'll be honest with you. This line could be 20 and I'd still lay the points. Yeah, the Titans had a good first half against the Giants, but they completely fizzled out. And against this Bills defense, and just like the Rams, I don't even know how they get to 10. Bills 38, Titans 10. Bills in a romp Monday night. Oh, gosh. The, this is not even going to be a close. Nobody circles the wagons like, like Bills Mafia. I got to take the Bills there. Yeah, I mean, the only question is going to be, how did the Titans get to 10? Yeah, then, no, I, I mean, maybe they could do a better job running with Henry, but the problem is, I mean, you're you're stuck with uh, Ryan Tannehill. You got weaker over the course of the offseason, and now you're playing a team that I think is – I have been saying for, like – I've been, like, drinking the Bills Kool-Aid and stirring, stirring it with sugar for probably the, the longest time within this past year. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, that problem is that offensive line, and then you've got now Vaughn Miller you have to deal with there in Buffalo. I mean, it's just – it has the makings of a disaster up there in Buffalo. And then we close it out with arguably the best game of the week. Minnesota Vikings take on the Philadelphia Eagles. It's Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, Lisa Salters on the call, the Monday Night Football on ABC. And the Eagles are two-and-a-half-point favorites in this home opener. 
This is going to be a, this was like one of the tougher ones for me to pick, but probably one of the games where I did a coin flip, but I went with the Vikings. Yeah, this is a tough one because if I just base it solely off of last week, I liked, I saw more out of Minnesota than I liked than the Eagles. And don't get me wrong, I think this has the chance to be an offensive explosion for either team. And yeah, this is actually one that I really struggled with because when I look at it, you know, what do I, what am I going to be worried more about? I, as I said, I like what I saw out of Minnesota more last week. I'd be more worried about the Eagles defense than Kirk Cousins primetime reputation. So this is one I'm probably going to get burned on, but I'm going to take the Eagles. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to take the Vikings to win this game outright and make a bold statement to me. I think them and the Packers are going to be going right down the wire in the NFC North. They made a statement last week. I think they make another one this week. Give me the Vikings to win this game outright. And they're, they're getting two and a half, but I think, I think they find a way to get this one uh, all told. And that is week number two in the national football league. Uh, We will see what happens. I've got a couple of bold picks. Hank's got some bold picks as well. We will recap the entire week two and discuss so many other things. There's a lot going on in the world of sports. And Hank and I will be back with you uh, on Tuesday. And, of course, folks, our Football Friday picks drop every Friday night at 7 p.m. Eastern here on the Empty the Bench Podcast Network. And you can also catch Hank and myself on Game On every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern here on the Empty the Bench Podcast Network. So for Hank and Dichter, I'm Johnny Montabano. Enjoy the football, everybody, and we will see you next week.